Uh, one more question, we're going to go. Yes. Because this whole thing runs on all this grass. What is it? What are, we, what are the grasses and, and how have they changed? Is, is, since you don't seed anything, how does it... Oh, does it, yeah, great question. Okay, change? well, when I, was a, when I was a kid, when I was like these little kids running around here, I can remember very well walking all of these fields and never setting foot on a piece of vegetation. There was that much bare ground. Yeah, I remember. I remember. I was. Uh, I got. I got to make a very public confession. I don't think I've ever told Sally this. Uh, she wrote an article after her very first visit here, and called this a hard scrabble farm. And the first time she said it, I was, oh yeah, this is this is this is a, this is not a lush farm, you know. But she had really hit the nail on the head. She got it and understood that it hasn't always been this. You know, there is. Believe I can remember when I first started driving a tractor, you know, farm boys start doing that about 12, 13 years old, you know, and 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 uh, it's it's always the hay rake. The hay rake is the easiest thing. Mower's a little technical. Baler is very technical. Hay rake, you know, you just you just you know point it and go, okay. And I can well remember this field <clears throat> raking this field into four little tiny windrows and getting less than 200 bales off of the whole field. Now, we get 1,500. Wow. How many acres is this? It's, um, this field is uh, 13 acres. Is mm -hmm. the uh, is? Yeah, from the far barn, yeah, down to here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the point is now, now, we're, we're in the one, two, we made hay, we grazed it twice, we're in the fourth, we're in the fourth harvest of the season, and we're getting five times as much forage in this fifth, fourth harvest of the season than we used to get in the entire season 50 years ago. Uh, is it technique or has it taken 30 years for this? It, it, well, it takes a while for the healing to occur. Yeah. So how does this occur? It's a combination of multispeciation, the, the, the tight, the mob stocking herbivorous solar conversion leadified carbon sutures, um, that control grazing, the piggerating composting, okay, the combination of all of those things has fed the soil. Ultimately, you cannot have an economically viable civilization if you don't have an ecologically viable soil. So by feeding the soil and doing things that awakened the latent energies, microorganisms, earthworms, seeds that were in that soil, uh, it is now bearing fruit. Now, if I knew, if I knew and had the kind of infrastructure in 1960 that we have today, I think we could have shortened it by half at least, maybe more. But we didn't. We didn't know what we know, and we didn't have what we have, and so you know, it it, it took a while. Yeah, great. Now, if you'll just. Uh, we're not going to stop there because because we're pretty much out of time. But behind us is the eggmobile. The eggmobile has several hundred layers in it on a slatted floor, and we move them about four days, three to four days behind the cows. As we'll, we'll drive by it real closely on our way out. But notice, look down in the in the in the field here at the cow patties. You'll notice how they have scratched through the cow patties and spread them out. They're eating the fly larvae out of the cow patties acting as a biological sanitizer and nutrient enhancer and spreader outer, okay, behind the cows like the egret on the nose of the rhinoceros, okay. It's the bird herbivore symbiotic relationship. In fact, cow manure, fresh cow manure contains the seven critical digestive enzymes for birds. So there's a very symbiotic digestive relationship between the herbivore and the bird. I hope everybody's enjoying these barn swallows running yeah, around. Yeah. Isn't that pretty? Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah.